Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. You know, throughout the world, most people spend their lives only 200 miles or so from the place that they were born, sometimes less. This makes us all rather provincial. We know only a certain way of life, and since we only know one way of life, we really can't kind of envision any other. Now, a few people are lucky to live more than 200 miles, and I have been lucky to have been one of them. I was born in a small town in South Dakota. I grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska, a city of about 100,000 at the time. Today it's about 250,000, and it's where I currently reside. From ages 5 to 15, I spent fractions of my summers on my grandparents' working cattle ranch in extremely rural South Dakota. Give you an example, you know, just some idea of how rural we're talking about. And this is not unusual for people who are cattle ranchers. Today, my family does retain some of the land that was on that ranch, and we have part of it, um, and we have a cabin out there, a small one. It, to, from that cabin, it is two miles on a pair of ruts and up a large hill that is unnavigable in bad weather to a gravel road. It is another 45 miles to the nearest paved road, and then it is 10 or so miles to Wall, South Dakota, which is a town of about 766, but it comes a gigantic tourist trap during tourist season. And then in the early 1990s, I moved to Chicago, where I lived first in the city and later on in the suburbs. And in the late 1990s, my family and I moved to the Sioux City, Iowa area, which is a little under 100,000. And though, well, while we were in a small town on the outskirts that was only a couple of thousand people, it was close enough to the city that we still had all the amenities of city life. And following my divorce in the mid-2000s, my kids and my ex moved back to Chicago. But as this was financially impossible for me, I moved to Redfield, Iowa, a small town just outside of Des Moines, which is a city of about 218,000. And because this is, was as close as I could get to Chicago while still ensuring that I could find a job in IT, this cut my drive time to see my kids in Chicago, but it was far from ideal. And I may very well have made a mistake by not moving to Chicago and simply roughing it out in extreme poverty. I later moved to Winterset, Iowa, a town of about 5,000, also on the outskirts of Des Moines, that is as close to a suburb as Des Moines probably gets. And last year, I moved back to Lincoln, which is where I live now. Now, this history makes me one of the very few people who has had experience of everything from living and working on a rural cattle ranch to working as an IT wonk in a major metro area. And I'm extremely glad for this history as it makes me, you know, allowed me to experience many different ways of life. And I'm aware that people live in radically different ways and have radically different views of the world that make total sense for wherever they live, but are totally inappropriate somewhere else. Now, I recently posted a video that is now my most popular video by far at over 4,000 views as I record this. And it's a post from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Instagram, where she recently streamed having discovered a garbage disposal for the first time. And if you want to see that video, there's a link to it in my description box below. She uh, has another video where she streamed from her community garden in which she was really astonished at the results and marveled at how putting right seeds in the ground will result in the growth of food plants. And if you want to see that video, there's a link for it in my description box as well. And while these do seem rather hysterical to me, they are obvious examples of AOC's provincialism. Because the reason that she didn't know about garbage disposals is because they've never been legal in New York City, despite the fact that they've been a common household appliance throughout the United States since they were first invented in 1927. The fact that they are illegal in New York City is an aberration that is located solely in New York City. Now, AOC's level of provincialism is dangerous because, you know, if she were just representing her own district, I really could care less. So that's fine. However, she does behave as if she represents everyone in the country. And this is not a good thing due to her provincialism and to something I've frankly asked my own congressman to attempt to halt on her part. So let me give you an example of provincialism and why it makes a congressman doing anything other than representing their own district kind of dangerous. Now Lincoln, Nebraska has no suburbs, unsurprisingly. Uh, while any fool with a TV knows about them, if you've never lived in or near one, you really don't understand what they are. Now, after moving to Chicago, I lived there for about 10 years, and living in both the city and the suburbs, well, I got to understand them. 
You know, I hadn't really realized living in Lincoln is that suburbs are physically attached to the cities. There's really, you know, no break in the buildings. There's just a territorial dividing line. It would therefore be foolish for a Nebraska congressman to attempt to represent a Chicagoland district. He or she doesn't even know what suburbs are. How can he pretend to know what people in Chicagoland want or need? And let me give you a visual aid. So behind me is, as often the case when I have nothing else to do, I put a background of rural South Dakota. But what happens if I change it? Now, do you think a South Dakota congressman should attempt to represent this district that they cannot possibly understand? Or should they instead just represent the South Dakota district that they do understand? And this is similarly AOC. Her ignorance of agricultural science shows badly, as the garden video shows clearly. AOC's Green New Deal would cut agricultural productivity in the, in, the, in the United States by at least 75%, leading to the starvation of upwards of a billion people worldwide. AOC doesn't know this. Her provincialism leads her to believe that she knows how modern agricultural science works and how it feeds not just the U.S., but the entire world. She presumes to speak for Nebraskans, South Dakotans, Iowans, and Chicagoans. But she has no knowledge of how things work in those states and that city. She believes that she knows everything because she comes from New York City, but she doesn't know everything. But because she thinks she does, and because she only knows a very small geographic area, and she now makes decisions on a national level, she is dangerously provincial. Now, I have resigned myself to the fact that AOC will be Congresswoman for life, as those in New York City's 14th district will never vote for a Republican nor a third party candidate. And hell, you can see it. Ted Kennedy, he was a U.S. Senator for almost 47 years, despite the fact that he was an obvious alcoholic. And he had early in life left a woman to drown after an automobile accident. So AOC is here to stay. She is also a vanguard of the socialists who come from generations after me that were formerly indoctrinated in U.S. schools to believe in communist and socialist philosophies. And if you want to see this, I've talked about it in detail in a video series I have called America's Broken Schools, and there is a link to that in my description box below. Now, due to AOC's provincialism, I extend to her an offer, and I hope that maybe she's watching, or maybe a viewer who knows her would pass along the video. And I'm going to do this with the utmost respect, which I often don't do on this show. I have to say to you, Congressman Ocasio-Cortez, I note that your knowledge, you're ill-informed of the science behind modern agriculture and how those of us in flyover country produce food not just for the world, but also the United States. And as proposed, your Green New Deal would cut agricultural productivity in the U.S. by about 75 percent, leading to the death by starvation of upwards of a billion people on Earth. Many of these would be from your own district. Now, the reason for this is basically impossible to explain to someone who's never been or spent time in an agricultural area. So I would extend to you this offer. If you will meet me at the Rapid City, South Dakota Regional Airport and give me just a couple of days, I will give you a tour of modern working ranch land. You'll be able to see the science for yourself, as well as come to an understanding of how your Green New Deal was so negatively impacted. Now, I would also give you a tour of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, consistently rated the number one slum in America. And most people have no conception of just how bad the res is. Now, I'm retired, so I am at your disposal at any time. I am capable of passing a federal background check, which is something I had to do for IT work. And you would, of course, be welcome to bring whatever security detail you thought was appropriate. Now, I would advise against bringing a large party to the res. It's, it, residents are not particularly um, inviting to non-Native Americans and particularly federal politicians. Their history with the federal government is all negative for 150 years. If you show up with a large party, it dredges up all kinds of horrible memories. For example, the kidnapping of Native American children and their forced placement into white foster homes that was a commonplace practice as late as the 1980s. So in any case, I am at your disposal, and I would very much enjoy your company for a brief tour of rural South Dakota. 
by the way, for my relatives, no, I will not be showing her any of the places we'd rather keep private. You know what I'm talking about. So that is all I really have to say about that subject for today. So if you like what I'm doing, I would really like to see your comments, and I'd love to respond back to them. And if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I particularly would hope that you would do that. I am 30 subs shy of 100 subs at this point. And I would really like to get that 100 sub mark because it would give me a personalized URL on YouTube, which is really important when I'm trying to market my show. And you can also, you know, aside from subscribing to the channel, you can like the video, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via PayPal, Subscribestar, or a place on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all of these in my description box below. So thanks for watching Tales from SYL Ranch, and remember, for a breath of fresh air, watch Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.